Moro has gotten so ridiculously strong that the only way to even contest him now is to get an angel involved. At the start of this story, who would have ever imagined that an angel would be fighting a villain who has now become stronger than any god of destruction? Or that's what he says. In the beginning, everything about Moro was old, outdated. He had been locked up for millions of years fighting against the gods of Universe 7. And then on the other side, you have the Galactic Patrol, which was where Mirus was introduced. He was sent down there for the experience of what a mortal world really is like. But as time went on, he grew attached to the mortals, more and more so to where now we are having this final confrontation between Moro, a being stronger than a god of destruction, versus Mirus, a very young angel. It's one of those moments now where it's pretty good to look back on the old chapters and seeing how things add up, seeing if anything that was said in the previous chapters hold any weight right now. And as far as Mirus versus Moro goes, there absolutely is. Earlier on in the story arc, it showed the Grand Priest talking to Whis, and they were talking about Mirus, and more specifically, the angelic law. This tiny bit of law explains the entire reason why you never see any angel fight, like Whis or anyone else. Basically, to summarize it very quickly, if an angel fights at full power in the mortal world, like Mirus is expected to do against Moro, he will be automatically wiped out without a trace. It's interesting to keep in mind though that it only says if an angel goes all out, full power in battle. That's how he was able to train Goku. He was fighting him, but he wasn't going all out. And as soon as he did, that's when Whis had to step in. Every time Mirus has confronted Moro in the earlier chapters of this arc, he has never actually used his own angelic power. It's always been a weapon, a third party power source that has no relation to his angelic power. So that's how, as an angel, he was able to get around it. So it's very sneakily clever forward-thinking writing by Toyotaro. This entire time, if you look back at the chapters, Mirus has never actually punched Moro, used any of his angelic powers. It's always been this type of gun that he has. What that means is that moving forward into the next part of the story, the climax, the final battle, or so we think, there's a good chance that he may not actually fight Moro. Whis was looking over Mirus pretty reliably. He even told the Grand Priest that I'll look after Mirus now. This was his first mistake. He'll become my responsibility. Anything that happens to him will be completely on me. That's what we said to the Grand Priest. And so Mirus now showing up on Earth to confront Moro, there's a good chance that Whis knows about it. Whis isn't stupid. He's not going to let Mirus just walk out uh, by himself. Whis could have easily told him that, okay, Mirus, you can go down but don't actually fight him. Basically do what I did against Broly. They are setting it up to make everyone think that this poor angel Mirus is sacrificing himself for these mortals that he barely knows. But these angels aren't dumb. Whis has even gotten involved a few times in the prior series and he seems to be fine. Angels have perspective on the entire multiverse. All they need to do is look into their staff and they can see anything they want. Nothing escapes them. And so if there's even the idea that Mirus is breaking the angelic law, They'll definitely know about it. Mirus couldn't have just snuck off here by himself. He probably got the okay sign from Whis as long as he didn't use his full power. So it's this weird dilemma of you have a guy that could easily take down Moro in Mirus, but if he does, he dies. It is kind of sneaky though when you think of it like that. When Mirus shot Moro with his gun, he actually put some of his own angelic energy into it. Is that breaking the angelic law? Probably not if it's not full power, but it is something to mention. Mirus would have no problem taking down Moro, but if he produces even a fraction of his full power, he dies as well. That is the state of the climax in the latest arc of Dragon Ball Super. That's basically it until the next chapter. Let me know what you think. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next Dragon Ball video.